As much as they would love for us to believe it, Operation Krabby Patty was not SpongeBob's first game. That would be Legend of the Lost Spatula. However, in defense of SpongeBob's claim, Operation Krabby Patty was the first SpongeBob game created by AWE Games and the first PC game to star the little square dude. So I guess in that continuity, SpongeBob technically isn't wrong. Even though it wasn't his first game, Operation Krabby Patty laid the foundation for the PC SpongeBob gaming scene and introduced AWE Games to the SpongeBob lore. What's AWE Games? Well, I'm glad you asked. Assuming you did, of course. Even if you didn't, I'm going to tell you anyway. In the early to mid-90s, a man named James M. Wheeler worked for a gaming company called Intracorp. While they made a fair amount of games, they never saw much success and they went defunct in 1996. In 1997, Wheeler emerged from the remains of Intracorp to find his own company, AWE Productions Inc., also known as AWE Games. Maybe it's pronounced AW Games for all I know. However, it wasn't until 1999 that the company began making games. Two years later, Nickelodeon decided to trust them with the rights to one of their biggest franchises, SpongeBob SquarePants. Let's see how that went. Yes. This stinks. What? Uh, Plankton? What you reading there? Oh, it's just the AWE Games logo. Silly me. In 2001, AWE gave us Operation Krabby Patty, published by THQ. They would go on to make many more PC games for the SpongeBob franchise, some of which were shockingly high quality for how small of a budget they likely had. They tried out a few different styles and adapted existing console games for the PC, such as Battle for Bikini Bottom and Lights, Camera, Pants. They made their last SpongeBob game in 2006, which had decent animation but far less content than any of the games they made before it, then they ceased operations in 2010. Nobody really knows what happened to them for certain. Due to it being such a small company, there isn't a whole lot of information available about the happenings at AWE. There are a good few articles speculating as to what went down, but nothing has been said by any official source. In retrospect, Operation Krabby Patty has received some mixed opinions. Some people view it as a nostalgia powerhouse, while others view it as a poorly made game that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. As someone who grew up playing it, I'd like to offer an opinion from it on the perspective of someone who fell into its target demographic when it came out. In the beginning, we see Spongebob dreaming about a few unusual topics that totally won't be relevant later. Just kidding, they're all scenes from the actual game. Once you wake up, you have the choice to wake up on the right side of bed or the wrong side. The stories are different, even though the minigames are pretty much the same. Right away, it's important to mention that AWE uses a lot of the same voice clips and music throughout their games. This is likely because of budget restrictions and the fact that getting all these actors together for such small projects would probably be impossible. Being the first in the AWE series, this game can pretty much get away with it since it's the first to use any of these clips altogether. Personally, I don't mind hearing the same music used across multiple titles. Some of it rocks. I will admit, it is kind of weird hearing music used in one context and then later used in something else entirely. For example, in the Battle for Bikini Bottom PC game, the badass right side menu music is used to signify that the robots have taken over, but in this game, it's just a simple menu theme. Anyway, from the menu, you can select the stage you want to play. You have to go in order, so right off the bat, you don't have much of a choice. On the right side, we get a story where Plankton summons these ant creatures to do his bidding. I guess they're the same size as him, so it makes sense in some way. It's a little hard to take in because, like, well, who are these guys? What are these guys? What is the relation to Plankton? Oh, well, let's just get on with it. The opening cutscene actually has some decent humor, and it's pretty enjoyable to watch. In hindsight, it's a little similar to the opening of Battle for Bikini Bottom, but this came first, so it's all right. Plankton unveils a robot replica of Mr. Krabs that serves as a prime antagonist in the game. There's also a Star Wars parody, I think. It doesn't really fit with the scene, but they get props for trying. 
you also get a hilarious fourth wall break. Basically, Robo Krabs is controlled by the ants, and it goes out to find Krabby Patty ingredients. The first mission is called Invasion of the Patty Snatchers, obviously a parody of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. AWE sure loves their references. To start off, this mission doesn't make any sense. Other ants are carrying the ingredients, and you have to steal them away from them. Shouldn't you be... working together? This is actually because the Wrong Side mission features the same premise, but with Spongebob as the player character. It makes sense for the ants to be antagonizing Spongebob, but here it just doesn't translate well. I kind of wish they reskinned the ants to be something else here, at the very least. You can find things throughout the stage to help you out while you're trying to assemble Krabby Patties. These things can be real lifesavers with the time limit. They're the same in every stage, pretty much. A kelp bar that gives you points, a clock that freezes time, and a map that shows you where everything is. Some things can also hurt you, incurring a penalty. Needless to say, the missions in this game are a little repetitive. You have to beat each mission three times, then play a bonus round. By then, you'll probably be sick of it and not even want to look at the mission again. You have to complete the three stages in one go because the game does not remember which round you left off on. So if, for any reason, you have to stop playing and come back later, you'll have to play through every round again. Accidentally clicking no when it asks you to retry can actually be painful. After getting the Krabby Patties, the sea ants, Plankton calls them that, go the wrong way, pissing off Plankton. In the next scene, Squidward has the same dream Spongebob had in the beginning. He also creeps on some women, which seems a little out of character somehow. I'm not sure why, it just doesn't feel Squidward-y. Anyway, Spongebob wakes him up and says he's going to tell Mr. Krabs about the stolen patties. However, Mr. Krabs is away on a treasure hunt, and Spongebob needs to drive to him. The next mission, Boating School 101, makes you have to drive to different checkpoints throughout a map. If you drive to the wrong one, you get a penalty. Don't hit pedestrians either, though I'm not sure why these idiots are walking in the middle of a driving course anyway. I remember finding this stage extremely difficult as a kid. Sometimes the checkpoints spawn in places that are nearly impossible to avoid, giving you no choice but to take a penalty. After Spongebob gets a learner's permit, he meets Patrick, but the wind blows his permit away and a clam eats it. Now you may be wondering, what was the point of the driving stage if you just lose your permit after it anyway? You are very right to wonder this. Spongebob and Patrick come across fishing hooks like the ones from the Hookie episode, and I like this addition a lot, actually. It uses an element from the show we don't see depicted very often. They think this array of hooks is a carnival, so they go to play in it. This begins the mission, Who Cut the Cheese? If you're wondering why it's called that, it's because you're trying to collect cheese from the hooks without being pulled up. At the start of the stage, you play as Patrick, and you have to find a hook without cheese. You then have to play as Spongebob and collect a certain amount of cheese before Patrick reaches the surface. Then the two switch places. This makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Like with the boating mission, this really doesn't add much to the story, but Spongebob hitches a ride with a jellyfish and flies over to Sandy in Jellyfish Field. Apparently she had been waiting for him because they planned to go jellyfishing together. Now, it's important for me to point something out here. I don't recall Sandy being particularly partial to jellyfishing in the show, but in both this game and Employee of the Month, her whole introduction into the game is through jellyfishing. Did AWE think Sandy was a big jellyfisher or something? For this next mission, you play as Spongebob and Sandy, and you have to catch jellyfish for Sandy's ray gun from the episode Sandy's Rocket. I really have to commend this game for using actual components of the show, even if they aren't really important to the overall story. This is actually a pretty fun and creative mission, but oh my gosh, what the hell is that thing? That's horrifying! The mission gets really annoying when you have to keep reloading after every six shots. You go behind Hideout Rock to switch characters, but if the colored jellyfish you need spawns on the other side of the map from it, you're doomed. Don't even bother trying to catch the demon jellyfish. It uses up too much time and ammo without providing any satisfactory gain. All of a sudden, a jellyfish flies into Spongebob's net and launches him all the way to the location where Mr. Krabs happens to be. How convenient. Mr. Krabs is looking for treasure on a big pirate ship, which might be a reference to the episode Arg. All of a sudden, the Flying Dutchman appears and tries to steal Mr. Krabs' treasure. 
I will admit, both this game and Employee of the Month have an issue with shoehorning the Flying Dutchman into the plot without much explanation. When I reached this stage as a kid, the game actually crashed, and this particular part wouldn't load for the longest time. I'm not sure why, but this stage on the right side in particular would not play. Probably a bug in the programming or something. There have been many reports of this game having a lot of bugs, but this is just one I particularly have experience with. Basically, you collect bubbles and try to blow them around the Flying Dutchman's crewmates by shooting them through cannons. It's probably the most creative stage in the game. The Flying Dutchman shows up every so often, but he's not really a threat. All that being said, this mission isn't great. You can't catch the pirates until they actually take the gold, so you spend most of the stage just waiting for something to happen. Also, why is Mr. Krabs so big? When you complete the mission, Spongebob tells Mr. Krabs about Plankton, and Plankton overhears this through a camera in Robo Krabs. He orders Robo Krabs to attack, but instead it self-destructs. Okay. Well, that was a lot, but there's still the wrong side to get through. I won't spend quite as much time on this one because it's more or less the same as the right side, but the story's different, so let's have a look. Spongebob wakes up one day to find his pet snail Gary is not by his bed. Instead, there's a voice recorder that can talk even if it hasn't been activated. The logic isn't really explained. Also, it's Plankton's voice on the other end. He tells Spongebob Gary is somewhere in Bikini Bottom and he needs to get a learner's permit to unlock the next clue as to where the snail is. They try to incorporate humor into this scene, but it's just not as funny as the right side's opening. The only joke that really got a chuckle out of me was the Survivor reference. You will gain immunity and can't be voted off. You play Boating School 101 and get your learner's permit. Plankton then asks you to get jellyfish jelly, so Spongebob goes to meet Patrick for the jellyfishing mission. In a way, this format works a little better for executing these mini-games than the right side. By having them be missions Spongebob needs to complete for a greater task, they aren't just thrown into the story without rhyme or reason. It's never explained why Plankton needs these various items, but at least there's somewhat of a reason for tracking them down. After you get the jellyfish jelly, it turns out Patrick ate the tape recorder, so you listen to the next recording through his belly. Plankton then sends you to bring him a Krabby Patty. There's also this running joke where he keeps trying to have the tape recorder self-destruct, but it just isn't working out for him. To be honest, it is kind of funny. We then get an extremely dark joke. Welcome to the Krabby Crab. What do you want? Mm. Oops. I really don't know what to say about that. Here's where the story gets a little weird. Basically, Plankton hired the ants to steal Krabby Patties for him. At the same time, Spongebob is going out to get Krabby Patties himself, so he just takes them from the ants. I also found a bug. Love it. Thanks to a miscommunication with Plankton, the ants bring the Krabby Patties to Spongebob's place. There's also a FedEx parody. Spongebob gets the next tape recorder, and it tells him to get some cheese. He meets up with Squidward, who... Okay, Spongebob convinces Squidward to help him collect cheese, leading to the Who Cut the Cheese mission. Did I mention this game was buggy? Plankton also gets this subplot where he does a psychiatric evaluation, but it doesn't really go anywhere. His final request for Spongebob is for the sponge to bring him $100. But Spongebob isn't sure how to get this money. I'm not joking, that's literally how they transition you into the final stage. At this point, they probably just didn't want to bother with a story explanation anymore. The cutscene doesn't give you any explanation as to what's going on, so unless you played the right side before this, you'll be very lost. You play the Save Me Money mission again, and then you win. It all proves to be meaningless anyway, because Gary just climbs out the chum bucket window and meets up with you. Also, Plankton's self-destruct button finally works after he manages to get the Krabby Patties. There's one last thing worth mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> it's just supposed to be funny, but I think this is actually the link between this game and Employee of the Month. Hear me out. Look at the location Squidward is in, then look at the location in the beginning of Employee of the Month. It's the same set. 
Operation Krabby Patty is a video game in the universe Employee of the Month takes place in. It all makes sense now. When Spongebob said Operation Krabby Patty was his very first game, he wasn't breaking the fourth wall. He actually had a video game made about him. In this universe, it wouldn't be wrong for him to say Operation Krabby Patty was his first game because it actually was. Either that or I'm just looking too deeply into it. Draw your own conclusions. So that was Operation Krabby Patty. What do I think of it? Well, even though I criticized a lot of its repetition and poor story choices, I don't think it's horrible. It's got humor, it uses elements of the show pretty well, and diehard Spongebob fans can get a kick out of it. It's not the worst game ever made, but there are a lot of areas where improvement is necessary. It's a very first game for AWE games, if you know what I mean. To offer my perspective from childhood, I had almost all of the AWE Spongebob games growing up, but out of all of them, this one was probably my least favorite. I just got more of a kick out of Lights, Camera, Pants, or the movie, or Battle for Bikini Bottoms. This one I didn't enjoy quite as much. I don't know, the others just had more variety, and a lot of the criticisms I have nowadays are the same I had as a kid. I really struggled with some of the mini-games, and the story still seems stupid to me, even when I was a young child who didn't comprehend good storytelling very well. I think it's important to note that this is a mini-game game above all else. The creators probably didn't bank on people looking too deeply into the story. One could argue it might have been an early version of the console version of Lights, Camera, Pants. Now, since so many people look at this game with such fondness, I can appreciate that, and I won't get mad if someone likes this game. If someone told me this was their favorite Spongebob game, I'd be happy about it. I'd be happy an AWE Spongebob game got some degree of recognition because this company deserves any appreciation it can get. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory.